Good morning, everyone. I, Sheikh Maz, on behalf of MCT's Rajiv Gandhi Institute of Technology and Department of Mechanical Engineering, welcome you all to online one-week short-term training program on recent trends in renewable energy sources and applications. Our speaker for today's session is Dr. Prakash Gare from Dr. Vishwanath Karad, MIT World Peace University, Pune. He's going to speak on the topic solar power tower technology and use of ray tracing software. Now, let me give an introduction about the guest. Dr. Prakash Gare has a teaching experience of 18 years along with a year of industrial experience. He has completed his PhD in mechanical engineering at Safti Pule Pune University in the year 2019, alongside being a guide of 80 undergraduate students and 12 postgraduate students. I welcome you, sir, wholeheartedly, and okay. thank you for joining us today. I request you to enlighten us with your knowledge and experience. Okay, good morning to everyone. Uh, now, can I share my screen, madam? Yes, sir. Please, thank you. Yes, sir, it is visible. Yes. So, very uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, the management of Rajiv Gandhi Institute of Technology and uh, Dr. Kiran Choudhury, uh, madam, uh, for giving me a, uh, an opportunity to interact with you all. Uh, myself, I'm Dr. Uh, Prakash M. Gade, Associate Professor uh, in School of Mechanical Engineering at Dr. Vishwanath Karat, MIT World Peace University, Pune. Previously, we were known as the Maharashtra Institute of Technology, Pune, MIT Pune. Uh, four years back, we got the status of a uh, state university uh, so now we are recognized as the MIT World Peace University. Today, uh, my topic of presentation is uh, solar power tower technology and use of ray tracing software, SolTrace. Now, as we know that uh, there are different types of solar uh, collectors, that is the non-concentrating type of collector and the concentrating type of collector. So the non-concentrating type of collectors are flat plate collectors. You must be knowing, you must have seen the flat plate collectors. We are using it for water heating. And also uh, evacuated tube collector that is also the uh, coming un under the non-concentrator type of collector. And concentrating type of collector mostly used for the uh, steam generation. So that are um, solar uh, parabolic trough collector, then the solar Fresnel lens collector, solar para parabolic dish collector, and solar power tower. So solar power tower is giving maximum efficiency and also the maximum temperature as compared to the other uh, concentrator. Solar power tower is also known as uh, the central receiver system or heliostat system. Uh, along with the solar power technology, we'll be discussing uh, about the ray tracing software SolTrace. So this software is uh, very much useful for the analysis of the solar concentrator type of systems. So uh, the flow of my presentation will be like this, uh, that is we'll be um, uh, going through the solar energy basics, some of the basics of the solar energy that is required for the concentrating system. Then the solar power technology, then the case study, uh, the small scale heliostat system that we have developed and on which we have uh, done our experimentation, we'll discuss that small scale heliostat system. Now the ray tracing software, uh, the information about the ray tracing software, how we can use that software for our analysis, we'll discuss that. And then the optimization of the heliostat. Now, solar energy. Uh, we know that the solar energy uh, can be used for different applications in different forms. So solar thermal collectors. Now we can use the solar energy either for the thermal load or for power generation. So in thermal load, uh, we can use it for uh, uh, for bathing purpose or in an industrial application for process heating purpose or in case of the industry for uh, cooking purpose, uh, for hotel industry, for uh, washing the bot uh, bottles and that. For that, we are using the thermal load. So that thermal load can be uh, generated 
by using the solar thermal collectors. So solar thermal collectors, in this case, mostly we are using the flat plate collectors uh, or evacuated tube collectors, and even small type of small scale uh, concentrating type of collectors. So this is one kind of application we can use as a solar thermal collectors. Also, uh, we can use the solar thermal collectors for power generation. So for power generation, uh, we uh, will be using the uh, power convergence cycle, that is the Rankine cycle or the gas turbine cycle. So along with the solar uh, thermal collectors, that is solar concentrator. So instead of uh, fuel, that is um, fossil fuels, we are using the solar energy to generate the heat. So this is used to generate the electricity, that is the power generation, we can use the solar thermal energy. Also, uh, photovoltaic collectors, you know that it is the direct conversion of solar energy into electricity. So the photovoltaic collectors are there. Uh, we can convert the solar energy directly into electricity. So there are no moving parts in case of the photovoltaic collectors. But today we'll be discussing on the solar thermal type of concentrator or solar thermal power plant. So uh, whenever we are uh, designing solar thermal power plant, uh, we uh, should know what are what is the uh, uh, source or uh, energy that is falling on the earth or at the location where you want to design the uh, solar power plant. Now that is depending on the uh, radiation intensity that is coming at the particular location. Now, uh, so the radiation intensity we are measuring in terms of watts per meter square. And that radiation intensity is uh, that is whatever the radiation intensity that we, it is received on the earth, it is known as the global radiation. And the global radiation is the combination of the direct radiation, you can see here in the figure that is a direct radiation. So this direct radiation is coming on the earth without any scattering. So without any obstruction, the solar radiation directly falls on the earth. But some of the radiation gets scattered due to uh, the uh, particles which is present in the atmosphere or due to the clouds or uh, due to the satellites so that solar radiation gets blocked or gets scattered. So that scattery, scattered radiation that is falling on the earth is known as the diffuse radiation. So the combination of the direct radiation and the diffuse radiation that is the addition of these two radiation is the global radiation. Now whenever we are designing the solar concentrating system in that case we are using making use of direct radiation because direct radiation is having higher intensity as compared to the diffuse radiation so that the direct radiation gets reflected from the solar concentrator to the receiver. So whenever we are designing the solar concentrating system, we make use of direct radiation component. Diffuse radiation is weak in intensity, so it doesn't get reflected back on the receiver. So we are not using diffuse radiation. So we need direct radiation for our calculation of a uh, solar concentrator. Now you can see this is the uh, variation of the uh, solar radiation for a particular day. Now it is a clear summer day is taken. So uh, the you can see this uh, green line is the global radiation. So it is combined that is diffuse and the direct radiation and this blue line is the direct radiation and this uh, line is the diffuse radiation. So uh, this uh, may vary that is when there is cloudy uh, days in that case the percentage of diffuse radiation will increase uh, the direct radiation will decrease so accordingly depending on the weather condition this quantity is very that is the diffuse radiation percentage may vary and direct radiation percentage may vary so for uh, designing as i told you designing of the concentrating system we need direct uh, component of the radiation now how to measure that so uh, you must have seen the radiation paranometer. So radiation paranometer is used for measuring the uh, radiation intensity. Now you can see here, these are the two uh, pictures. Uh, these are um, one on the left-hand side one is the radiation paranometer, that is the bare radiation paranometer. And the right-hand side figure is the radiation paranometer with the shading ring. It is the same paranometer, but it is shaded with the shading ring. So these two uh, instruments we have uh, uh, mounted uh, on the terrace of uh, sc our School of Mechanical Engineering, MIT WPU. So here we are continuously, daily we are measuring the solar intensity. So the solar intensity we are measuring in terms of watts per meter square. So this is open to the atmosphere, so it will absorb both, that is direct radiation as well as the diffuse radiation. So this uh, paranometer will give us the global radiation quantity. 
So it will give us the global radiation quantity. And this parameter will, is giving us the diffuse radiation because the shaded ring, which is on the top of this um, pyranometer, it is continuously falling a shadow on this receiver, that is the black plate. So it is obstructing the direct component of the sun rays. And we have to adjust the shading ring according to the declination angle of the sun and earth. So as the declination angle varies throughout the year, accordingly you have to shift the shading ring position so that this shading ring will always uh, fall a shadow on this uh, uh, pyranometer. So we'll be getting only uh, the diffuse, that is scattered radiation, surrounding radiation will fall on this. So it, this uh, pyranometer will give us the diffuse radiation. Now from these two readings, that is once we uh, got the global radiation and diffuse radiation, we can uh, subtract the diffuse radiation from global radiation and we'll get the direct beam radiation. There is one more component that, uh, that is instrument that is the pyralometer. From this, we can directly measure the uh, uh, direct beam radiation. So, but by using this, we can make a, a use of these two uh, radiation pyranometer and we can find out the direct component of the uh, radiation intensity. Now, whenever in the uh, concentrating type of system, the concentration ratio is very important parameter. Okay, higher is the compression ratio, higher is the temperature that will, uh, com uh, concentration ratio, higher is the temperature that will get. Now, what is a concentration ratio? So, so the concentration ratio is divided into uh, types or two ways, that is optical concentration ratio and geometrical concentration ratio. So the optical concentration ratio is the ratio, it is the ratio of the uh, that is solar radiation or the intensity that is falling on the receiver divided by the solar intensity that is falling on the collector. So the intensity that is falling on the receiver is uh, higher than the intensity on the uh, collector because the receiver area is small and we are concentrating the solar radiation on the small receiver area. So this will give you the optical concentration ratio and geometrical concentration ratio, concentration ratio is based on the area area of the receiver and area of the aperture. So it is the ratio of the area of the aperture and the area of the receiver. So we can find out the concentration ratio by using either optical concentration ratio or geometrical concentration ratio. Now, based on the concentration ratio, we can see that they, uh, this is the table showing the non-concentrating type of collectors and the concentrating type of collector. You can see here, uh, these are uh, flat plate collectors, evacuated tube collectors, and compound parabolic trough collector. These are stationary. And it is uh, actually uh, flat plate collectors and evacuated tube collectors are non-concentrating type of collectors. So that's why you can see the concentration ratio is one here. That is the absorber area and uh, uh, receiver area is same for the flat plate collector and evacuated tube collector. Uh, then for the concentrator, that is the concentrators that we are using. So linear Fresnel reflector, parabolic trough reflector, cylindrical trough ref, uh, reflectors, its concentration ratio, you can see that it varies from 10 to 15. And this uh, concentrators are line focusing concentrators. That's why it is tubular. The absorber type is tubular. You can see the temperature that we are getting from the non-concentrating type is from 30 to 200 degrees uh, Celsius. But for concentrator type, for get, for uh, to get the higher temperature, we are using the concentrator. So the concentration ratio increases when we are going for the higher concentration, uh, different types of concentrator. Uh, then the uh, two axis tracking type of concentrator, this is the parabolic dish uh, reflector and the heliostat field collectors means the solar tower collector. So these are point focusing. So this type of concentrators are point focusing. And so that because of the point focusing, the concentration ratio is very high. And also we get the maximum temperature in case of the uh, point focusing type of concentrator. Now we'll see uh, the different types of solar concentrators, parabolic uh, dish concentrator and linear Fresnel concentrator. These are line focusing type of concentrating collectors. Line focusing, you can see here, this is the parabolic mirror in case of parabolic trough. This is the parabolic mirror, the curved mirror given the shape of the parabola. And this is the absorber tube, which is placed at the focal point of the parabola. So when the solar radiation fall, radiations fall on the mirrors, it gets reflected onto the receiver. 
so this receiver is the tubular receiver it is a line focusing and through this receiver we can circulate the water or the thermic oil so when the thermic oil uh, passes through it uh, because of the solar radiation that is falling on the mirror and as per the parabolic uh, principle it gets reflected onto the receiver and this will heat the thermic oil that is flowing through the tube and this thermic oil after getting heated at certain higher te high temperature this thermic oil we can send it to the uh, heat exchanger and the heat exchanger uh, we can transfer the heat of the thermic oil to the water convert the water into steam and we can use that steam for uh, power generation or process heating application so this is the parabolic trough type of concentrator then the linear uh, frenial concentrator see the linear frenial see uh, the, there is limitation on the size of the parabolic trough collector because it is not possible to uh, fabricate a very large size of parabolic collector so instead of that in linear frenial uh, reflector what is done that is this parabolas are bro broken into number of straight uh, mirrors that is known as the frenalization of the mirror so the frenalization of the mirrors are have been done and it is mounted on the ground so these are the mirrors and when it will focus the light on the receiver it will act as the uh, total parabola so it is the frenalization of the mirrors have been done in case of the linear frenal uh, concentrator and this mirror single mirror that is the line mirror are tracked uh, according to the movement of the sun here also the parabolic trough is uh, tracked single uh, axis tracking is there so according to the apparent movement of the sun the parabolic trough is uh, tracked same way here these mirrors individual mirrors are tracked according to the position of the sun and it reflects the solar energy falling on this onto the receiver so this is the uh, line focusing receiver through this also we are uh, sucking the water or the thermic oil and heat the thermic oil and use it for the different application so these two types are the line focusing type of concentrator now another concentrators are the point focusing type of concentrator just a minute so another types are the point focusing type of concentrator so this is the parabolic dish uh, type of concentrator so in parabolic dish type of concentrator this is the paraboloid dish it is given the paraboloid shape that is once the parabola you will rotate so you will get the shape of the paraboloid so this paraboloid shape is there the solar radiation that is falling on the this paraboloid will get reflected at the point previously in the parabola that is parabolic trough it is the line focusing here it is point focusing so all the radiation get reflected at this point so that's why the concentration ratio is very high you can see this area of this uh, dish divided by the area of the receiver so that the concentration ratio is very high in case of the parabolic dish normally at the focal point we are using the stirling engine to generate the power so we are using the stirling engine to generate the power so here the stirling engine is used and the maximum capacity of this parabolic dish is around 25 kilowatt so this is point focusing now as we have seen in the fresnel type of uh, linear fresnel uh, fresnel reflector it is fresnelized the parabolic trough is fresnelized same way here the central receiver so there is limitation to uh, fabricate a very large paraboloid uh, dish because at certain uh, 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 size we can fabricate the parabolic dish but to increase the size the same way as we have done for the fresnel uh, lens same way here the fresnelization of the mirrors has been done that is the mirrors are cut in a certain shape and that is mounted on the ground so that when these mirrors all the cut mirrors of the paraboloid paraboloid dish when mounted on the ground it will be uh, observed when when from top you will see it will be observed as the paraboloid dish which is mounted at the ground okay so the mirrors are broken into number of um, uh, me, uh, helio that is we are calling that mirrors as the heliostat so these mirrors are arranged on the ground so that and it this individual mirror is tracked according to the movement of the sun so this tracking in case of dish um, uh, parabolic dish and central receiver the tracking is two axis tracking that is each mirror you have to track according to the altitudinal movement of the sun and the azimuthal movement of the sun so for each mirror we need two uh, motors to track it continuously so these mirrors 
are focusing or reflecting the radiation that is falling on this onto the top of the receiver. So we have to adjust the, the normal to the mirror should be such that it should bisect the incident radiation and the reflected radiations. So accordingly, the mirror will be tracked. So this is the central receiver system and we are today will be focusing on mostly on the central receiver system. Now, uh, this is just for the example, uh, that is this kind of work we have done uh, at our MIT WPU with the uh, UG student. So in that, uh, we have made the combination of the flat plate collector and the parabolic trough collector. So this is just for information that we can combine the two systems and we can improve the performance of the system. So in this case, what we have done, the flat plate collectors are used as the initial heating, preheating. And you can you, you must be knowing that the flat plate collectors is having bottom dot uh, bottom header and the top header. So in the bottom header, initially we are supplying water. And just a minute, I'll on the so this is the uh, down header through which uh, to which we are supplying the water. And uh, the water then get rises uh, th uh, through this riser tubes are there. So it's get heated by the solar radiation falling on it. And there is upper header where the hot water gets collected. So in this, we have done the combination of the flat plate collector and the parabolic trough collector. So for this parabolic trough collector, we have fabricated the parabolic trough collector. For this parabolic trough collector, the up upper header of the flat plate collector uh, is considered as the receiver. So this will be the tubular receiver for the parabolic collector. And uh, so additional heating from the parabolic trough collector is done by uh, using this parabolic trough collector. So you can see that uh, around we got the 10 uh, degree temperature rise for this combination as compared to only using the flat plate collector. So, so we have uh, done this kind. So uh, the why we are showing, I'm showing this you. So you can have the combination of the different concentrators and you can increase the performance of the system. Now we'll see uh, the solar tower power plant. So this is uh, the solar tower power plant. So we'll see first this uh, schematic diagram of the solar power tower plant. So these are the heliostats, number of heliostats are there. So on which the solar radiation will form uh, fall on the heliostat and get reflected onto the top of the tower that is in the receiver. So in the receiver, you can heat that working fluid that working fluid may be different. That is either it may be water and steam or molten salt or thermic oil. It will be different uh, as per your application. So this is the tower on which we are placing the receiver. On the top of the tower, there is a receiver. So all the solar radiation get reflected onto the receiver. Now this uh, schematic diagram is shown for the molten salt uh, system. So uh, molten salt is the combination of the sodium nitrate and potassium nitrate. So this uh, molten salt is continuously circulated through the reserve. Uh, there is a cold uh, salt tank and the hot salt tank. So this for the uh, salt will flow from the cold salt tank to the receiver and it gets heated in the receiver. And again, that is uh, circulated into the hot salt tank. Now from this hot salt tank, this uh, high temperature salt is supplied to the steam generator that is to the boiler. It is supplied to the boiler. So this right side power block is same as our conventional uh, Rankine cycle. Okay, so this is the steam uh, generator that is the boiler to which we are supplying the hot salt. So in the boiler, the steam gets formed. That steam again uh, supplied to the superheater where we are uh, using some heat of the hot salt. So the steam gets superheated here. Uh, and then from this superheater, the steam goes to the high pressure turbine. So here you can see the high pressure turbine, the turbine shaft is connected to the generator. Then the high pressure turbine, then again, uh, from the high pressure turbine, the steam is taken out. It is reheated by taking the heat from the hot salt and again supplied to the intermediate pressure turbine or, and low pressure turbine. And then finally condenser and then the circulation. You can see here from the condenser, again, the heat is some of the heat that is the condensate is again circulated to the boiler. So some of the heat is again utilized from the hot salt. As uh, in the conventional uh, thermal power plant, we are having economizer. So it is the same in the same way this will work that is preheat the water that is supplied to the steam generator. 
So in this way, this is just example of the molten salt. So you can use the, you can directly produce the steam here and that steam directly you can use for the power generation. That is also we can use water and steam uh, type of receiver. Now you can see this is the, uh, these are the, uh, this is 200 megawatt solar power tower plant in the north uh, western province of uh, Qinghai, China. So you can see here, uh, these are the number of uh, heliostat that is mounted on the earth. Uh, this heliostat uh, will form a parabolic shape and will concentrate on a single point that is at the tower. So you can see this is the tower where uh, all the radiations get reflected on the tower. Okay, so this is the solar tower power plant. Uh, Kiran Patel, madam. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, everything is okay yes, up till now? Okay. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, now we'll see uh, the different components of the solar tower power plant or solar power power plant. Uh, the main component, very important component because uh, uh, mo efficiency mostly depends on this component and that component is the heliostat. See, heliostat is nothing but the mirror because this mirror, as I told you, these are cut mirrors. So these mirrors are placed on the ground. So whatever the incident ray, it should get reflected onto the top of the receiver. And this uh, rays that is the, uh, should form, that is the angle uh, between the incident ray with the normal is same as the, that is this normal should bisect the angle between incident ray and reflected ray. Accordingly, based on this normal position, we have to track the, uh, this uh, uh, heliostat according to the altitudinal and azimuthal movement of the sun. So these mirrors are mounted on a structure, either a single mirror is used or number of facets of mirrors are used on a single heliostat and that facets of mirrors are canted. So that is known as the canting of the mirrors. So that facets of the mirrors are canted. Accordingly, it will give a curvature to that curvature shape to the heliostat and it will reflect properly uh, the uh, energy on the receiver. So uh, the, I, this, the heliostat may be a single mirror or facets of number of facets of mirrors. Now they are to track the heliostat, uh, we have to use two drives. That is two motors. One is for the elevation uh, tracking. Another is for the azimuthal tracking. So accordingly, both the two axis tracking is required uh, for a single heliostat to track. Now the reflectivity of this heliostat is a major, a major factor because if the reflectivity decreases, the uh, intensity of the radiation that is reflected on the receiver will also get re um, reduced. So initially when we are uh, placing the mirrors on the receiver, uh, on the heliostat, its reflectivity is around 0.90 to 0.94. But as we goes on using the uh, heliostat due to the dust particles or due to the pouring particles that gets deposited on the mirrors and that will reduce the uh, intensity of the radiation that is reflected on the receiver. So for that, in intermittently or in between, we have to clean the mirrors. So the cleaning is required, that is maintenance of the mirrors are required continuously because even in a small drop in the uh, reflectivity will uh, make very much loss of the efficiency. So we have to think about that is before when we are um, uh, fabricating the plant or uh, commissioning the plant, we have to think of the cleaning mechanism also. Now the working media that is used in the receiver is either water and steam that is converting water into steam, then the molten salt, as I told you, I had shown you the uh, plant, then we can use the uh, working media as air or it will, there will be synthetic oil. The working media may be liquid metal or it may be the solid particle. We'll see the receiver when you can see the media. Over there. So these are the types of the receiver. So this is the uh, tubular receiver. In tubular receiver, uh, the number of tubes are there. So this is the receiver cylindrical type. You can see the panels of the tubes are made. So these are the panels and these panels are arranged in a cylindrical fashion. So this is in, at the top of the tower, we are placing the receiver. So the number of tubes are there through these tubes, we are circulating the water or the uh, molten salt or the working media and through this. So it's get heated because the solar radiation from all side will fall on this. 
so it is omnidirection uh, type of receiver it is open to from all sides so all the solar radiation will fall on this and the media or the working fluid will get heated through these tubes so the number of tubes are arranged in a cylindrical fashion now the drawback of this is that as it is open to the atmosphere you can see here the actual uh, receiver uh, with the number of tubes so as it is open to the atmosphere the convection losses are more to reduce the convection losses there is another type of receiver that is the cavity receiver so instead of uh, placing the tubes open we are placing the tubes in a cavity so in the cavity uh, the uh, by using the cavity we can uh, reduce the uh, or suppress the convection losses so all the tubes are mounted into the cavity and the solar radiation will fall on the cavity but the limitation of using the cavity receiver is that only from one side of heliostat field will focus on this because it is not the only direction so if you want to use the uh, other direction heliostat also in that case we have to use the multiple cavities surrounding to that okay so that is the cavity receiver to reduce the uh, convection losses we are using the cavity receiver you can see here the position of the cavity receiver so from one side of the heliostat it will focus on this and it will heat the uh, fluid working fluid in the cavity receiver so now another receiver is the volumetric receiver now volumetric receiver is the uh, receiver it is just a regenerative type of receiver it uses the porous material that is the porous material is used that is the solid material so the solar radiation will fall on this solid material it will get heated so it is placed at the focus point uh, the solar radiation will uh, fall on this solid material it is the porous material so it will get heated and absorb the heat of the solar radiation and as it is porous so we are passing the air through this porous material so that air will uh, take the heat from this solid materials and we will get heated and that hot air we can use for our application either for you can use that air for uh, the gas turbine plant so that air we can supply to the gas turbine plant or for other application also for heating water also so this is the volumetric type of receiver so in volumetric type of receiver we can use the honeycomb ceramic foam ceramics metal gauze foam metal or other porous material so this is the volumetric type of receiver another type of receiver is the solid particle receiver now this is the new advancement that is going in the uh, receiver so solid particle receiver in this uh, to get the higher temperature because when we are using the molten salt uh, water and steam in that case the temperature of that uh, uh, that media is having limitation maximum temperature limitation is there depending on the that working media so to have the temperature higher than 1000 degree celsius we are using the solid particle receiver so the solid particle receiver we are it is also called as the falling solid particle because the particles uh, are uh, the particles get heated you can see this is the receiver cavity receiver and this is the aperture open to that uh, open to uh, the radiation that is coming in so that radiation will uh, fall on these particles and that particles will get heated and this particles after getting heated then fall into the heat exchanger so into the uh, there is one storage tank above that from the storage tank then it goes into the heat exchanger so here we can transfer the heat from the solid particles to the water and we can convert the water into steam and again after giving heat to the water again that solid particles is taken uh, at the bottom uh, storage tank and then again circulated upwards so it is continuous circulation of the solid particle so it will reduce the total cost some uh, research is going on uh, some of the plants are trying to be installed commission based on the solid particle receiver so this is uh, the improvement that is the research is going on this solid particle receiver now we'll see uh, some of the uh, solar tower power plants um, around the world just uh, some list are are collected there are number of solar thermal power plants solar tower power plants but some of the list that is Uh, you can see that this is the solar one uh, it is in california the capacity is 10 uh, megawatt uh, the receiver that is used here is the external type tubular receiver working media is water and steam it is year of com uh, commissioning is 1986 now it is uh, decommissioned because of uh, the 
old um, then the solar to uh, by adding some more number of uh, and it is also 10 megawatt but here uh, instead of water and steam the molten salt is used as the working medium so uh, so the water salt uh, that is the uh, molten salt is used instead of the water steam it is at um, it is commissioned at uh, commissioned at 1995 another so these are the uh, different uh, power plants solar tower power plants so you can see the different types of receiver we can use so normally whenever we are using the molten salt in that case we are using the cavity type of receiver and whenever water and steam uh, some of uh, we are using cavity receiver or external tube receiver so you can see the different types of receiver and different capacities of the uh, power plant so these are known as the design uh, point capacity or design point generation capacity so these are the different um, uh, power plant still no, more number of list is there but these are the some of the uh, power plant that is initially commissioned now just for the uh, um, uh, that is uh, we'll see one case study that is uh, the battling uh, solar power tower plant in china its uh, design uh, point um, capacity is 1 mat, uh, 1 uh, megawatt so you can see that for generating uh, generating 1 megawatt uh, electricity uh, the input that is uh, the solar uh, direct normal irradiance that is required uh, is around 10,000 kilowatt. So the direct normal DNM is direct normal irradiance uh, that is required is 10,000 kilowatt. Out of this 10,000 kilowatt that is falling on the aperture that is on the mirror. Now there are some losses. So the losses are mentioned in the second uh, this um, column. So the losses are there. So the initial losses are the concentration losses. That is the optical losses. So these optical losses are shading, sh uh, shadowing and blocking or shading and blocking cosine losses, uh, specular reflectance, uh, reflectance losses, atmospheric uh, attenuation or transmission losses, and receiver intercept factor losses. Now, these losses are around 3,500 kilowatts. So this, this is the actual case. So the actual values of the battling SPT plant. So the losses of the optical losses are around 3,500 kilowatts. So the residual is 6,500 uh, kilowatts. Then the... Um, uh, receiver uh, at the receiver losses, the receiver uh, position, there are some losses that are reflection losses from the receiver, then the convection losses, the radiation losses, and uh, thermal conduction losses. So, combining all these losses, uh, it is around 1300 kilowatt, and the residual is remaining uh, 5200 kilowatt. So, again, transmission losses, then again, uh, we are using the steam uh, in the steam turbine. So, the, gen uh, the steam generation or steam turbine losses are there. So it is around uh, this 4,045. Uh, so the finally we'll get the net output as 1,000 uh, kilowatt. So these are the losses. So if you reduce these losses, we can increase the capacity of the power plant. So you can see here, this is the one megawatt for finally we are getting. So in this, you can see the most of the losses or second most losses on which we can work is the optical losses. So our aim is to reduce the optical losses. So most of the part is lost is the here in the optical losses. Just a minute. Now we can see that is the uh, optical losses that is plays an important role for designing of the solar power tower concentrating system. Okay, so the optical losses. So we can see that it is the second um, largest among all the losses. So that is by cosine and interception losses. Then the optical efficiency of the solar tower concentrator is important to the thermal performance of the entire solar tower collector. The aperture plane of cavity receiver 
So the aperture plane of the cavity receiver and the absorbing surface of any central receiver are key interfaces of the energy flux. So energy flux means the solar radiation that is falling on the receiver, either it is a cavity receiver or the central receiver. So that is falling on the receiver is very important parameter. So before commissioning of any uh, thermal power plant, it is important to uh, know or uh, it is important to calculate before commissioning the uh, thermal power plant, how much amount of solar radiation will fall on the receiver and what, what is the density distribution? That is how the solar radiation will get distributed onto the receiver. So it is necessary to simulate and analyze the concentrated uh, system on the time changing solar flux density distribution on the flat or curved receiving surface of the collector with the main considering the optical errors. So optical errors associated with the uh, heliostat systems, we have to consider and based on that, we have to find out the solar flux density distribution. Now this is uh, the solar power tower uh, concentrator performance requirement. Now, if you can see when we are focusing the heliostat on the receiver, suppose a single heliostat, if you focus on the receiver, then the flux density distribution. It is not like that we'll get a point focus, all the solar radiation will be focused on a single point and you will get the maximum temperature over there. It is not the condition. So you can see that if you focus a flat plate collector onto the receiver, the flux density distribution is like this, that at the middle of the receiver, you will get the maximum solar intensity. And as we move away from the centroid, the solar intensity or solar uh, intensity will goes on reducing. This is due to the errors associated with the mirrors and also the sun shape error. Sun shape error means whatever the solar radiation that we are getting on the earth, it is not the uh, culminated or it is not the straight uh, uh, rays. The rays that we are getting on the earth surface is in the form of the core. That is, it is having making 32 minutes uh, uh, of angle uh, when you are uh, coming on the uh, when it is coming on the earth. So due to that sun shape error, the radiation that is we are not getting a single point we are getting the conical form of the reflected rays so that rays that is falling it is not a point that is all the uh, intensity will not get at maximum at the center that is uh, everywhere but will get maximum at the center and as we move away from the center the intensity goes on reducing now uh, Along with the sun shape error, there are some errors that are the specular uh, uh, specularity errors are there. Then cosine loss is there, shading and blocking losses are there and atmospheric. So that losses we'll see now. So that losses will get, it will, it will get added. So it will also increase. Now due to this, the image size will increase. When the, say this is the, this is the image that we are getting on the receiver surface. So this is the ideal image that we should get when we are focusing a single heliostat on the receiver. But if the errors get added, that is the specularity errors or slope errors or the cosine loss, shading and blocking. So this image size will increase. And if the image size will increase, the intensity of the radiation that is falling on the receiver will also reduce. So what are these losses? First, we'll see the losses. So this losses should be minimum to increase the efficiency. So the specular reflectance losses, you can see that uh, this is um, the slope errors and the specularity errors and the tracking error. If the tracking is perfect, then we have to think of the slope error and the specularity error. So slope error is the macroscopic imperfection. So this is the slope error. So while fabricating the mirror, the fabricator, if it will not, it is not 100% um, flat. So true flat surface, you will not get. 
some of the my macroscopic imperfection will be there so due to this whatever the solar radiation that is uh, falling on this uh, so it should get reflect that is twice um, this angle uh, angle of reflection will get increase due to the imperfection on the surface so this type of imperfection on the surface it's you can see the uh, due to this specular um, direction it's uh, cone cone will increase and it will increase the image size same way there are specularity error so these are the microscopic imperfections these are also essentially due to the deposition quality of the reflective sub substrate so that uh, substrate will uh, is having some imperfection so due to that also the specularity errors will increase so these are the errors due to the fabrication and the substrates that is used for making the mirrors so these are the slope error and the specularity error then the optical uh, losses are cosine uh, loss or cosine effect so cosine effect is that uh, whenever uh, the solar radiation fall on the mirror and it gets reflected onto the receiver if the solar radiation in uh, rays and uh, uh, normal of the receiver are in line then the reflected area that is the effective reflected area is same as the uh, effective area of the mirror so all the intensity will get reflected onto the mirror but if the angle between the normal to the uh, mirror and uh, incident sun ray increases so the effective reflected area will be reduced you can see that on the left hand side the b figure the effective reflected area is uh, less and here on a side effective reflected area is same as the mirror so you can see that the normally uh, the mirrors which are placed uh, in the northern Uh, side and focusing towards south uh, its cosine losses are less but the mirrors that are placed on the southern side uh, and focusing towards north their cosine effect uh, cosine losses are more so you can see that the incident ray and the reflected ray here the cosine uh, that is the angle is uh, more than uh, zero so because of that we will get the less amount of intensity so due to this the optical losses increases due to the cosine effect and this cosine effect depends on the location of the uh, mirror location of the receiver and the location of the sun so depending on the location if the sun is at low in the sky at that time the cosine efficiency or the cosine effect is more so this is the cosine effect or cosine loss then the uh, other losses are the shadowing and blocking you can see here uh, the shadowing and blocking is caused due to the heliostat which is near to each other so the uh, consequent uh, uh, heliostat which is near will um, fall a shadow on the mirror that is or heliostat which is behind the previous heliostat you can see here the incident rays that is coming some of the rays get uh, blocked by uh, uh, this um, heliostat and due to this it will uh, create a shadow fall a shadow on the heliostat which is behind it so due to this shadow that part of reflection will get obstructed that is that part of mirror will not reflect the solar radiation uh, clearly same way when this mirror is reflecting the rays onto the receiver the heliostat which is in front of this mirror part of the reflection will get blocked by the um, uh, mirror uh, by the heliostat which is in front of the uh, back heliostat so due to this the uh, intensity that is falling on the receiver will be reduced so the positioning of the heliostat in the heliostat field is very important so there should not be any blockage or shadowing that should cause inside the heliostat field in the heliostat field you can see here this is the actual shading and sh uh, sh blockage is shown over here that is because of the mirror that is heliostat which is behind you can see here this heliostat's uh, reflection gets blocked by this a uh, heliostat so this is the shadowing and blocking so for calculation of the uh, cosine effect or cosine loss there is equation so by using this equation depending on the position of the mirrors we can find out uh, by this calculation using this equation we can easily find out the cosine effect or the cosine uh, loss by using this equation so there are equations to find out the cosine loss also same way for finding out the blocking loss we are there there are equations by using this equation we can find out the blocking and accordingly we can position the heliostat in the heliostat field 
another uh, loss is that due to the shadow of the tower so we have to think of that also that is how to position the first row of the uh, heliostat so that the shadow should not fall on the uh, uh, heliostat because throughout the day as the sun will move the shadow will also move so accordingly you have to design you have to think of that the shadow of the tower should not fall on the receiver so that is important because it is reducing the efficiency now again the uh, atmospheric attenuation factor so this atmospheric uh, attenuation factor that is the solar radiation uh, from the heliostat when it is falling on the receiver it has to pass through a certain distance if the distance is very large then due to the aerosol or the atmospheric content the intensity of radiation decreases so there is limit up to which we can place the heliostat so these are the um, uh, equation so for finding out the atmospheric attenuation factor or atmospheric attenuation loss so by using this equation we can find out so the equation for uh, 23 km visibility uh, so we are using this equation and for 5 km visibility we are using this equation so these are the attenuation factor or attenuation loss we can find out sd is the slant distance from heliostat center to the receiver and that is in kilometer so by using this distance we can easily find out the atmospheric attenuation factor so these are the different losses with this losses we have to design the heliostat field so accordingly uh, we have to design the heliostat field so this helios there are different types of heliostat field a uh, radial staggered field layout so this is uh, the, uh, the the mirrors are placed radially in the staggered position so that it will not cause any blocking and shadowing uh, and accordingly the distance of the first row should be such that the tower should not cause co co shadow on this mirrors so accordingly we have to position the mirrors in the heliostat field so that the different uh, layouts are there so radial staggered field layout surrounding field layout and north south con field layout so these are the layouts of the heliostat field now uh, there is uh, uh, the optimum heliostat field is uh, given the guidelines are given in the design of the heliostat such that if this is the tower position this is the tower then the last heliostat in the heliostat field should be six times the tower height so six times the tower height Uh, so if it is one meter is the tower height, then the last heliostat should be at the six meter. This is just for the example. So these are the optimum positions of the heliostats in the heliostat field. So this is the surrounding uh, type of heliostat field. So here on the back side, uh, it is um, uh, three times the tower height. So accordingly, the positions are optimized for the heliostat field. So accordingly, when we are designing the heliostat field, we can uh, make use of this uh, optimum sizes. so this is for surrounding and if it is a so normally for large heliostat uh, greater than 500 megawatt we are using this consideration but if the uh, small heliostat field that is less than uh, 100 megawatt then we are using uh, the this uh, that is the last heliostat uh, heliostat position should be should be 5 to 7 times the power height now Uh, as i told you the case study of uh, the heliostat system that we have uh, fabricated and we have uh, done the experiments on it that will discuss now as uh, we have seen that the optical errors are very important so initially we have uh, fabricated our system uh, we have done the trial of tracking of that system and then we have find out the optical errors associated with the system and that optical errors if one we, we have evaluated by using by making use of the solitary software so how we have done that i'll explain you now so the system that we want to uh, design the proposed system is the total uh, reflective area for that system uh, is taken as the 100 meters square and size of heliostat uh, mirror is taken 0.6 meter by 0.6 meter so around 2 feet by 2 feet is the size of the mirror single mirror and total area of when we are adding all the mirror size so it will be 100 meters square this is the proposed heliostat system so this system we want to fabricate afterwards so to uh, predict the performance of this 100 meter uh, system we have fabricated a small system so this is the small scale system a prototype of the system is made but for use uh, making the prototype of the system the system that we have fabricated is the gang 
heliostat system. It is the gang heliostat system. So this heliostat system is patented by Dr. Ravindra Patwardhan, sir. This system is the uh, God uh, patented US patent. So there is no such system in world that is uh, on this um, uh, type of system that is a uh, gang type of heliostat. So in gang type of heliostat, as you can see in the conventional heliostat, for each mirror, we need two motors. For but here, only by using two motors, number of heliostats can be tried. That is the significant feature of this gang heliostat system. So only by using two motors, we can track this heliostat. There is a rotatable shaft. That rotatable shaft will track the heliostat. So that is the specific or the important feature of this. So it will reduce the cost of the system by reducing the cost on the motors. So in the conventional system, suppose this is the single heliostat. For tracking the single heliostat, we need to have the two motors. But here, number of heliostats you can place on the single actuating rod. And by using only two motors here, one motor for the azimuthal tracking and another motor for the altitudinal tracking. So we can track the number of heliostats. So this is the patented system and we had work on this patented system. So Ravindra Patwardhan sir has made the patent and we have fabricated the system based on the based on this patent. So you can see that, uh, I'll just show you the animation of uh, this, that is how that system works. So you can see here, this is the azimuthal tracking of the heliostat. So this uh, animation is showing how the heliostat move. So there is motor, that motor is pushing the rod and a pin is uh, connected to this arm and accordingly the pin will be uh, attached to the uh, this uh, rotatable shaft and it will move the it will move the this arm and accordingly move the or uh, track the heliostat. So this is what the gang type of heliostat system that we have fabricated and we have done the track. So prototype we have made for this initial for tracking, we have uh, done the tracking, then finalized the tracking. So when the perfect tracking we got, then we have uh, uh, the, done the experimentation. Now for experimentation, uh, we have used the beam characterization system. So the beam uh, characterization system, uh, uh, Kiran Patil, madam. Uh, uh, still, I'll need 15 minutes. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So for that system, we have used the beam characterization system. So you can uh, see here, these are the, uh, uh, this is the schematic of our experimental setup. So these are the number of uh, heliostats. So total nine heliostat system we have fabricated. So this is the just a prototype, a working prototype. And after um, going through the tracking and all this thing, uh, we have measured the flux intensity on the receiver. So we have used the flat receiver. On this, we are focusing this nine heliostat and we are uh, measuring the flux intensity on this to get the uh, to find out the optical errors associated with the system. So that optical errors, we have found out the uh, specularity error and the slope error. So this is the schematic. And here, um, I'll uh, tell you later, that is what the method we have used to find out. So this is the receiver. To this receiver, uh, we have um, connected the thermocouples from the backside by making holes in the receiver plate and connecting the number of thermocouples from the backside. So this thermocouples will give us the temperature. So you can see here uh, the number of thermocouples, total 49 thermocouples uh, we have used. So this uh, thermocouples uh, are connected on the backside of the receiver. So when the solar radiation fall on this, it will get uh, heated, the plate will get heated and the temperature of the plate we can measure. So based on the temperature of the plate, you can see here the uh, connection from the backside. So the number of thermocouples are connected from the backside. Now, based on the temperature, by using this equation, we can find out the flux uh, intensity at the particular location. So this method is already uh, used by uh, CA Kinjivedekar uh, at uh, IIT Bombay, that is 
uh, along with the Shirish Kedare sir, the same method we have implemented here to find out the flux distribution. So here uh, for getting the flux distribution, we should know uh, the plate that we are using, its absorptivity value we should know, and also its emissivity value we should know. So this for getting the absorptivity value and emissivity value, we have tested this plate uh, from the uh, School of Energy Studies, uh, Savitri Bhai from Savitri Bhai Pune University. Uh, we have uh, given them the sample of this receiver plate and they had given us by measuring the absorptivity and emissivity of the plate. So that values we have used here for our calculation. And by using this equation, we can find out the flux at that particular location by taking use of the temperature. So the number of uh, temperature will get on the receiver. So this is our experimental setup. So this is, uh, we have um, uh, mounted on the terrace um, of uh, our uh, School of Mechanical Engineering. And some of the MTech students, MTech thermal students are working on this. So uh, we are uh, doing different kinds of um, uh, experimentation on this. You can see this is the total system. So this system is fabricated based on the patent uh, of uh, Ravindra Patwardhan sir. We have taken the patent from him. And uh, based on his patent, we have fabricated this system. Initially, we have tested the, um, this uh, system for the tracking. And for uh, tracking, um, we have made the calculation. That is, the solar geometry calculation is very important. That is, if you will, I'll show you the uh, Excel sheet of this. So you can see that just putting the day here, uh, we can find out. Uh, can you able to see the Excel sheet? Uh, Padit, madam. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So this Excel sheet is made to have the program for tracking. So we should know what is the solar angles. So that is important to know the solar angles. According to the solar angles, we can uh, have the uh, heliostat angles. So that um, is uh, this program is fed into the uh, that is programming software. So just by uh, changing the date, you can you will get the different that is the changes in the angles. So a program is made, Excel program is made accordingly. See all the uh, calculations, that is all the formulas are there in the solar book. You have to make use of that formulas and you can find out easily the solar position at a particular time. So you can see that the st uh, standard time is given. This is the lat latter uh, apparent time. And based on that, at that time, you can find out where is the position of the sun. That is, what is the hour angle? What is the altitude angle of the sun? Zenith angle of the sun and the azimuth angle of the sun. So accordingly, directly we'll get the values. So if we can make a simple program by this. So uh, this is uh, the system. Now I'll just show you uh, the video of tracking of our system. So this is the altitudinal tracking. You can see the movement of the mirrors or heliostat. So by using the motor, we can track, see by using the single motor, the number of mirrors are tracked. So you can increase the number of mirrors in this row. Accordingly, you have to change the capacity of the motor and you can track it continuously with the single motor. That is the altitudinal tracking. Then we'll see the azimuthal tracking. So this is the azimuthal tracking. So the number of mirrors, you can see that this is the arm to which the pin is connected. And this is the rotatable shaft. It is pushing the, uh, this rod. You can see here by the motor, it get pushed. There is, um, so the movement and it is focusing on the receiver. So this is the azimuthal tracking. So both that azimuthal tracking and it is done by only using the two uh, motors. You can see the focus on the receiver. So we are focusing on the receiver and here we are measuring the flux distribution. So thermocouples are connected and you can see here the focus of all the nine heliostat and the thermocouples are connected and we are measuring the temperature of the thermocouples. And from that uh, temperature, we are finding out the flux map. So you can see that this is the experimental flux map or the variation. Now you can see that it is not like that everywhere you are getting the same uh, temperature. The temperature is varying everywhere and accordingly the flux that is falling, the flux value is different. So you can see that the maximum flux value, this is the contour uh, the plot of the flux uh, map. So you can see that the maximum flux will be are getting at the center. And as we move away from the center, the flux value goes on reducing. So this is the flux variation of the uh, solar intensity on the receiver. So based on this flux variation, you can decide the size of the receiver. 
so the receiver size you can decide based on this so normally uh, around this uh, the 10 per 10% of the peak flux we can decide depending on your application you can decide the size of the receiver if the intensity is very poor at the outer side of the receiver so you can decrease the size of the receiver and the optimum size based on what uh, how much amount of solar intensity radiation you want on the receiver accordingly you can decide the size so by knowing the flux distribution value we can decide the size of the uh, our receiver now uh, the experimental after experimentation we have done the uh, ray tracing so in the ray tracing uh, software that is the sol trace now there are number of uh, so ray tracing software like delsol helios spray uh, hfl cal uh, sol trace and tonish so these softwares are there but sol trace software is freely available it is uh, developed by the nrel national renewable energy laboratory uh, and this is uh, as it is freely available we can make use of this sol trace software so it is based on the monte monte carlo uh, ray tracing methodology and the results that we are getting from the sol trace software are in the form of flux maps so scattered plots and the statistical values also will be getting at a particular location how much amount of the intensity that also we are getting from this sol trace software see in case of um, uh, fluid uh, analysis thermal analysis of the fluid we are using the cfd software that is the fluent software so same way here we are using the solitary software for the flux distribution analysis so uh, this is the uh, steps in the solitary software by uh, for using the solitary software so we have to first give what is the sun position and the sun shape then the optical properties of the reflecting and the absorbing material that is reflecting means the mirror and the absorbing uh, material then the geometrical information of the different stages then the aiming points and the surface uh, normals that we have to calculate so there is um, excel program is made to calculate the aiming points then we have to trace it and the results i'll just show you the software so this is uh, the sol trace software this is the gui of sol trace software initially we have to give the sun shape and the sun direction so first in the sun shape or sun direction so in the sun direction either you can give the global coordinate so you have to find out the x y z coordinate of the sun either you can give in this way or you can give the latitude what is the day of the year and the time that is r so we can give this uh, so it will fix the position of the sun in the sky so latitude day and the r it will fix the position of the sun in the sky at that time and you can use the sun shape as i told you the sun shape means it is the in the whatever the radiation that we are getting so it is in the normal uh, distribution curve that is the gaussian distribution or you can also have the peel box distribution so normally peel box is used for the small scale uh, power plant gaussian is used for the large scale power plant so the peel box uh, is used uh, for the analysis then after this sun shape that is giving the direction and the sun shape then the optical properties of the mirror and the receiver that we have to give as an input so the optical properties of the mirror so helio here we have we can give the name we can change name here you can write mirror or anything so here we have given the name as helio so this helio uh, heliostat that is mirror so the reflectivity is given uh, also for our case we have measured the reflectivity uh, from the uh, lab so it is it had given the reflectivity as 0.89 Uh, then the uh, transmittivity slope error and speculativity error these values we have to change accordingly i'll tell you how to change why we are changing this value so slope error and speculativity error these are the errors optical errors so these values actually we'll be finding out uh, for our case for our uh, mirrors so these values we have to put for the heliostat and also for the target means the receiver what are the properties of the receiver so after giving the properties optical properties of the heliostat and receiver then we have to give the positions of the stages so in this um, software uh, we are will be giving the position of the heliostat so different heliostat uh, positions will be giving so you can see that the nine heliostat so it's x coordinate y coordinate and z coordinate so this is the location of the heliostat in the field so after giving the location of the heliostat in the field we have to give its aim point that is the heliostat is focusing the radiation the radiation reflected radiation onto the receiver 
so the how where is the position of the receiver based on the position of the receiver will be giving the uh, will be finding out the aim points and this aim points we have to put in this table so but getting this aim point uh, we have made the uh, excel sheet i'll just show you the excel sheet so you can see here this is the excel sheet by using the excel sheet you can find out the aim points so there are different calculations by using some geometrical um, solar geometrical components you can see that depending on our uh, uh, time and uh, latitude and location so we can find out the aim points so everything we have to put here what is the latitude what is the day of the year and what is the time accordingly it will co calculate all the uh, values of the solar geometry that is what is the declination angle what is the hour angle at that time what is azimuthal angle what is the elevation angle of the sun position so this is the sun unit vector that is x y z position this is the target position that we have to give target means the receiver position and accordingly based on this input it will find out the aim point so it will find out the aim point so this x y z aim points we have to put there in the uh, this uh, software so accordingly after putting this software then the target position we have to give receiver position so its receiver position is 1.52 uh, there uh, meters from the ground so after giving this uh, receiver position then we can trace now heliostat uh, what is the size uh, shape of the heliostat that we can give from this aperture so here there is aperture shapes different shapes are there so now we have used the rectangular heliostat so the aperture shape is rectangular so it may be the different either circular so it may be different hexagonal so according to your uh, uh, shape of the heliostat you can change it and give the shape accordingly also the surface so that surface may be flat surface or the curvature so either conical surface so or the parabolic surface so accordingly you can give the surface of your collector or the receiver so you can give any surface so we have chosen here the flat surface any surface means the surface that you have fabricated so accordingly the aperture and the surface you have to select same way for the target also the surface if it is circular then it is circular it should be circular if it is rectangular then it should be a rectangle so after giving all this data then we have to trace the ray tracing we have to do so in the ray tracing just the number of rays we can uh, change the number of rays accordingly it will trace so after uh, getting so in that when tracing we have to include the sun shape and optical errors so sun shape errors and the optical errors optical errors means the specularity errors and the slope error so you have to check these boxes before running so if you don't want to check then you will get a totally uh, no variation in the uh, intensity so uh, after checking these boxes that is we are including the sun shape also and including the optical errors that is the specularity errors and the slope error so if you trace it so after tracing so Uh, now tracing has been done so you can see here the intersection so you can see here so this is the position of the heliostat and this is the receiver so we can also plot the rays so you can see here this is now you can see that these are the mirrors okay on which the solar radiation is falling and it gets reflected onto the receiver so you can see there so we can see the receiver the on the receiver the radiation that is reflected is falling on the receiver so on the receiver we can find out the flux mode. and here you can change your dni value it may be 700 800 so that value you can change here and accordingly the intensity will change so this is the uh, intersections uh, or the uh, location of the heliostat we can see from this now the flux map we can get 
so the flux map or flux contour also contour plot will get so this is the contour plot so we'll get the contour plot here that is variation of the flux distribution we can get here so accordingly you can change here the values and accordingly the value of the peak flux so what is the peak flux value that is and its location that is at the center point you will get the peak flux value then the minimum flux and the maximum flux average flux so peak flux is the maximum flux and the average flux that we are getting so these values we are getting so the variation of the flux we are getting and if you write take flux data so this will give you the actual values uh, with the its location that is it will give you the xy coordinate and on that xy coordinate what is the intensity of the solar radiation at that location so easily by taking the values that is you can uh, export these values outside and that you can transport it to the excel sheet and you can do the calculation based on that is you can you will get all the values at all the points so in this way we can find out the flux map by using the soltre software you will also get the surface plot you can see here this is the surface plot so the flux variation on the xy this is the xy plate and this is the flux variation so you can see the maximum flux we are getting at the center and as we move away the flux intensity goes on decreasing so this is known as the flux distribution flux density distribution so this is what the soltre software so we can make use of soltre software for our uh, solar application so in this way we are using the soltre software so these are the uh, screenshots uh, showing the, um, uh, the intersections and the flux map so these are that i had explained you so after taking values from it that is from the take plot data we are exported the values uh, taken into the excel sheet and we have plotted the graphs so you can see that this is the uh, surface plot we have plotted for the flux and this is the uh, contour plot uh, we have plotted for the nine heliostat so you can see that the variation of the flux so it will give you the flux in watts per meter square so you can plot it and uh, you can um uh, do the analysis of the flux distribution now once we have um uh, you would make use of soltrace along with the experimentations both the results we have compared that is along with the experimentation and the soltrace software so in this case now we are varied that is that um uh, uh slope error and specularity error where we are very we have varies that specularity and slope error so that both the intensity flux that is flux density distribution from the by the sol trace and by the experimentation get overlap uh, exactly so when we have done that by varying the slope error and specularity error in the sol trace software and getting the result map with the experimental we find out that the specularity error value is 10 milli radians and uh, slope error value is 10 milli radians and specularity value of 1 milli radians the flux distribution the contours get superimposed exactly or near about that so from this so you you make use of this to find out the optical errors associated with the system so you have to do we have formulated the we have um, the method how to find out the optical errors associated with the system so initially you have to do the experimentation then make use of the soltre software then vary the optical errors in the soltre software and uh, where you are matching the results uh, that will be the your so optical error so in this way we can find out the optical errors for our system because for this is for the prototype system but when we will go for the uh, that is uh, the large system that is the proposed 100 meters square system if you are having the values before hand with you that is these are the slope errors so you can easily predict the performance or performance of the system so without knowing the slope errors you are when you will calculate do the calculations so you will get a um, um, very high values of the flux that is falling on the receiver but when you include the uh, errors associated with the system the values that you will get will be near about correct so uh, based on uh, now we have to develop the system so for that we optimize the system the optimize that is the optical efficiency model uh, is uh, we have used this model to optimize the system so this is the Uh, optimization function that is the optical efficiency and the packing density factor these are the based on these two functions uh, we have optimized the system so these are the parameters that because the position of the heliostat should be proper there should not be any uh, shading and blocking 
uh, there should not be the shadow of the tower. The cosine losses should be minimum. So based on that, we have optimized our heliostat field for 100 meters square. So these are the parameters, size of the heliostat, then heliostat side, uh, height from the ground and the re reflective area. So these are the input parameters. Based on these input parameters, we are uh, having these boundary conditions or these are upper bound and lower bounds for our values. We are given that and we have made the MATLAB program for our optimization uh, of this. So this is the MATLAB program. So based on the MATLAB program, we have optimized our system. So you can see these are the locations of the heliostat in the optimized field. This is the position of the tower. This is the X direction, Y direction. And these are the locations of the heliostat. So it is giving the optical efficiency as 76% by considering the, it is not like that we can't make the uh, blocking and shadowing zero or even the cosine losses zero. There are some losses. So based on that, we got the optical efficiency as 76%. The field length, we got 17 meter, braid 11.59, uh, tower height 4.5 meter. And the R mean, that is to, it should not cost a uh, cast shadow, a shadow on the uh, mirrors or heliostat. So the minimum R mean is coming 3.375 meter. And this is the packing density factor. That is the, uh, there should not be, uh, the heliostat should not get packed on the um, field. So there should be some space between. So the packing density factor is coming as 0.22. So this is, uh, again, we have uh, simulated in the Soltre software. Uh, still, we have not fabricated it. So we have simulated. So we can uh, have the feel of that system. How will be the flux distribution so that, that you can uh, find out in the Soltre software, the flux distribution. And you can predict the performance of the your system. And also you can predict or you can, also you can find out the receiver size based on these flux values. So you can easily find out, design the receiver or find out the optimum size of the receiver. So this is about the previous system. Now presently at MIT WPU, we are uh, working on the research. So this is the modification. I just, uh, I'll take two minutes. So this is the modification uh, that we have done in the previous system. In the previous system for each row, we have to use two motors. Now we have done the modification in the previous system. So here, what we have done, so single motor is used for rotation, that is azimuthal tracking, a single motor is used. And for the altitudinal tracking for each rotatable shard, the motors are used. I'll just show you the video of this, so you will get the feel of what we are doing at MIT WPU. So you can see that this is the rotatable shaft, it is rotated. And accordingly, these mirrors are adjusted. So this is the azimuthal drive, so it is rotating. So this is the rotatable platform. So these mirrors are focused on this. This is the tubular receiver. So this uh, work is done by my BTEC students. Uh, they are working and MTech student is working on the tracking of this. So uh, this uh, BTEC, uh, they have the, uh, designed this uh, tubular receiver. Uh, so through this tubular receiver, we are supplying water and um, heating the water. So small scale, so only water heating will be doing here. On the large scale, if you go on the large scale, very large, so we are uh, planning to, uh, uh, have the, uh, this uh, system of 30 kilowatt and we'll be using it for power generation. So that is, uh, we have applied for MNRE for the funding. So you can see that the uh, radiations that is falling on the receiver here. So accordingly, we have to adjust it. So the radiations that is falling on the receiver, these are the mirrors that are focusing on the receiver. So these are the receiver tubes in the conical. So we have used this here, the conical receiver. So you can heat the water in this and in the small scale, in large scale, you can uh, convert the water into steam. Also, you can put here the boiler and you can convert the water into steam or also you can uh, use air as a working fluid and you can um, heat the air also. So you can see the sun position is also taken into the video. So accordingly, the sun position, the mirrors are adjusted and the reflected rays are focused on the receiver. Okay, thank you for your patience listening. Thank you very much. If you want to uh, contact me, this is my email ID. You can contact me anytime.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, sir. Indeed, it was a session filled with information. Now, with your permission, I would like to take up on the question and answer session. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No problem. So, so the first question is: What are the factors one should consider while doing layout of video strategy? See, the factors uh, that is considered is the cosine uh, efficiency. then the shadowing and blocking so we have made uh, use of that is all the factors in the uh, matlab programming because whenever you want to design the heliostat field you have to uh, check the position you have to have the proper position of the heliostat single heliostat in location of the heliostat in the heliostat field so you have to take consideration all the losses optical losses the reflectivity also we are we have consider the reflectivity then the cosine losses shadowing losses blocking losses everything all the losses so the second question is by satya murthy yeah. uh, maaz i think he has raised the hand also you can ask uh, sir can ask that uh, madam am i audible madam yes sir you are yes. audible yes sir. yes thank you sir namaskar sir this is satya murthy from coimbatore sir first of all Uh, congratulations for the nice presentation sir my question sir uh, sir what is the maximum uh, uh, the percentage of uh, uh, the losses especially in solar uh, power generation sir uh, how we are controlling it sir uh, the losses are uh, around uh, 55% optical losses because optical losses are so high in the uh, solar uh, tower system because uh, as i told you the losses that is the uh, specular losses the reflectivity losses cosine losses all when you are take it together so the um, it is around 55% so the efficiency optical efficiency is around 45% or you can say the 50% sir any efforts uh, are there to reduce that sir or it is the at present this is the uh, no, highest no. see we can reduce the uh, losses by having the Uh, reflectivity to be maintained above ninety percent. So the mirrors that you will be using, it should have the proper reflectivity. Also, uh, the uh, shadowing and blocking losses you can reduce. You can place the mirrors accordingly, uh, okay. and uh, uh, by that you can reduce five to ten percent of the losses. Okay, but uh, but uh, how far? Uh, how often you have to maybe uh, wipe out the uh, panels, sir, uh, because to avoid this type of losses as well. it depends on the location so uh, depending on the dust particle suppose in the rajasthan there is uh, so much dust particle so the uh, timing of the cleaning will be uh, more intermittently so more regularly you have to clean it so depending on which location you are placing it and the dust uh, particles uh, their weather condition accordingly you have to clean it uh, the you have, accordingly you have to plan the uh, maintenance or cleaning of the mirrors thank you sir thank you very much thank you very much Good morning. Good morning, Bagas sir. Good morning. Uh, can you hear me? Good morning, hear me? sir. Bandar sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Ah, uh, sir. Ah, uh, I have gone through your presentation and it was uh, very nice. And regarding uh, the presentation, you have uh, used one tool, right? Uh, regarding the uh, va variable variable entry and all. So it was yes, uh, so nice. so can you please tell something about uh, more about this uh, tool uh, how we can use it in a perfect way or uh, like that it is uh, how much uh, it is important in our uh, design and all uh, see for uh, its detail you can contact me afterwards i will tell you how to uh, use that tools uh, so mostly see uh, i'll use it for the uh, flat that is uh, for heliostat system you can make use it for also for the uh, parabolic trough type of system parabolic dish type of system or fresnel reflector for all type of concentrator you can use make use of this tool so it is freely available you just go to the nr uh, el lab uh, with the, from there you can just download the software and you can make it uh, use of it Sure, sir. I can. I think. Uh, I, I think. I think uh, we can have the separate session for that. Sir, got it. We can have the separate session for that. I think uh, we can. Uh, we can arrange that uh, in association with uh, Kiran Choudhary, madam. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. No problem. Yes, okay. sir. The separate really, sir, training, yes, uh, hands-on training and other things that can be taken care probably if time permits. 
I think yes, uh, we can arrange that. That is also possible. Yes, sir. Definitely, sir. Definitely, we can also. arrange the separate because session. It is our it is our pride that we can help in this further regard. Absolutely, no. Yes, sir. Definitely, sir. Definitely. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your. Thank valuable you, thank you, Pramit, sir. Doctor uh, Gade, I am having few questions. If you allow me to do that. Yes, sir. Why not? Uh, um, apart from uh, uh, water and steam and other thing, uh, are there any uh, efficient uh, thermo fluids are available? Uh, yes, sir. Is it required, sir, you can, we is can it required you... that we can have the more research on the thermo fluid side? Probably. Yes, sir. So we can use uh, synthetic oil mm -hmm. uh, as a thermic fluid. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, we can use molten salt uh, as a thermic fluid. Most of the uh, power plant that is now installed. Uh, around the world that is of the large size they are using making use of molten salt because molten salt is having higher temperature uh, uh, taking ability uh, so that waxes uh, or something like that some sort of wax material or uh, wax is having that is the waxes are that we can use as a phase change material but phase waxes material. are having yeah that we can use as a phase change material but waxes is having uh, low temperature stability Okay. So okay. Uh, that waxes we can't use directly, but alternative okay. and in a heat exchanger we can use it. Hmm. So is there any possibility that we can have some polymetric compound probably, which can yes, uh, yes. Uh, give the uh, better? Uh, I think uh, we can talk to Mallari Kulkarni later on probably on yes, this. Yes, 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 no problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. So the next question is. What variation of height is significant when evaluating changes in solar radiation at the same la la latitude and longitude? See, as I had shown you uh, the uh, uh, Excel sheet, so it will uh, the from that Excel sheet, it is uh, we can find out the position of the sun at that particular time, and the variation of the flux that is the solar intensity that is falling on particular location. For that, uh, the instrument that I told you, that is the paranometer. You can install the paranometer uh, at your location and you can find out the variation of the flux intensity. Or even that data, uh, if you're not uh, able to install the paranometer, even uh, that data you can get from the meteorological department at your uh, city. From there also, you, you can get the variation of the flux uh, radio intensity data. So the next question is by Neelam Gajjar, who has unmuted herself right now. Hello, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. It was a very indeed uh, informative session. We learned a lot through this uh, one-hour presentation. Uh, I have one question that how do you fix the quantity of salt? And uh, like, uh, is it available? It should be in a, a liquid form means uh, some water part should be there. See, uh liquid form means uh, the molten salt we are heating so it is actually uh, got freeze below uh, 250 degrees celsius so whenever you want to circulate the molten salt it is the combination of as i told you sodium nitrate and potassium nitrate 60 to 40 percent combination and that continuously you have to circulate that uh, because when it doesn't doesn't get circulate so uh, and the temperature drops down so it is. Uh, it get, does. Uh, it suddenly gets uh, uh, defreeze. That is, the freezing uh, of the molten salt will take place. So heating of the molten salt is required when we are using the molten salt. So it is a. It is in the liquid form. When you are heating, is making we are making it in liquid and we are circulating that. Hello, sir. Yeah. So the this uh, molten salt should be in a uh, particular liquid form, but uh, we yes. have to heat up to certain temperature. Then only it will be in that state. So yes, it, yes. So about two ninety degrees Celsius. It's yeah. It should okay. be about a two ninety degrees Celsius. Okay. Okay. And the quantity, how do you fix it? So quantity, the flow rate. Quantity depends on what is the capacity of your plant. Depending on the capacity and what flow rate you need, what temperature you need, accordingly you have to decide the quantity. Okay, okay. Thank you, I sir. I think, uh, Professor Gade, I can I can add to this if you allow yes. me. Yes, sir. Yes, I think no uh, one has to look at the eutectic properties also, eutectic properties. So I think that is more important. The concentration, yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, uh, concentration mixed with water and other. So eutectic yes, yes, properties that need to be checked before yes. using it for application. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely, sir.
sir, a link to this. Is there any research paper available? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, on my work. Uh, yes. Uh, link to this uh, molten salt. No, I did not work on the molten salt, madam. Okay. Okay. But on okay. molten salt, you will get number of papers are there. Normally, molten salt is used for the large uh, type of uh, power plant, as I told you. So you will get number of papers on molten salt. Lot of lot of papers are available. Right? Lot of papers are available. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, this uh, synthetic oil uh, from where can we get it if we we want to start? Yeah, you can get it from the industry also. That is, there are uh, so many industries we are uh, producing the synthetic oil. So you just uh, do the mar market survey, you will get it. Now. Okay. Even that VG thirty or something like that, which is used uh, commonly in heat exchangers, that is also yes, served yes. the purpose. VG thirty. Yes. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, madam. So the next. Uh, ha, Mad. Yes. There is the next question. Of which materials are used for heliostatic mirrors for the best results? Heliostatic. Heliostatic mirrors for the best result. See the mirrors uh, are normally uh, having the uh, substrate substrate as uh, the silver or even aluminium. But when you are using silver, so it gives you the higher reflectivity, and the mirror uh, that mirror should have the low uh, iron uh, accordingly. So it depends on the fabrication. But the silver uh, base mirror is uh, more uh, giving more reflectivity. And also now there are some mirrors which are anti-dust reflective mirrors are also coming. So they are not keeping dust on the mirrors. So accordingly, that kind. So as you goes on uh, using the higher um, technology mirrors, so its cost will also you, uh, increase. Mark. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, ma please ask the next question. Yes, ma'am. The next question is: Does the material of the tank affect the efficiency of the working of heliostat system? Material of the Tank, does it affect the efficiency of the working of the heliostat system? Yeah, material material of the receiver. Yes, heliostat sir. system. The heliostat system. Heliostat material means what? It is a mirror only. So the question is: Does the material of the tank affect the efficiency tank. of? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Tank means the uh, the tubes. Suppose it is the tubular, so we can use the uh, alloy steel or even the copper is the for small scale we are using copper or for high uh, conductivity material we have to use so it will affect the uh, performance of uh, the power plant uh, the next question is what is the cost of salt based software no no as i told you it is freely available it is freely downloadable you can uh, uh, download easily and it is freely that's why i had shown this software it, it, there is no uh, need uh, of the that is uh, paying something to that NREL. NREL made it freely downloadable, so you can freely download and you can easily use it. Absolutely. Yes, so, and I guess there are no more for the questions. Sir, I'm having. Yes, ma'am. Madam, uh, how many questions are there? No, only one question I would like to ask. Sir. Okay, ma'am. Okay, no. We are given that uh, last one, it is the conical uh, heat exchange. Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, why it is conical? Why it is not a straight one? What is the reason behind that? Uh, see, we are focusing from the uh, ground. You, you must have seen that uh, yes, the sir. heliostat that is yes. on the ground. So to get the solar radiation perpendicular uh, on the receiver surface, you have make use of that conical surface. If you keep the cylinder over there, then the solar radiation will not be uh, normal to the surface. So to have the uh, solar radiation normal on the surface, we have done uh, two, two, three types of receiver variation. And finally, we come up with the conical receiver so that all the solar radiation should fall uh, normally on the surface. So we'll get the max uh, higher efficiency. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Maz, any other questions? Sir? Yes, so one more question. Which type of heliostat shape is having more efficiency? See, uh, the heliostat, uh, either it is the uh, uh, flat heliostat or the concave mirror type of heliostat. So if you try it, because it is difficult to uh, fabricate the concave type of mirrors. So, but if you uh, fabricate it, so the concave type of mirror, because focusing, 
if you use flat heliostat so it's focus that is the image will get spray but if you have the concave type of mirrors so it will uh, focus a uh, um, very sharp image on the receiver so instead of uh, using the single mirrors as i told you the number of facets uh, mirrors we are using so number of mirrors we are arranging on the receiver and that mirrors we are canted so the canting mechanism is there different so that canting is done for the mirrors and that canting uh, shape is adjusting the shape near to the parabolic shape or the uh, curvature shape and we can focus it okay so i guess there are no more questions so here i conclude the question answer sessions thank you so much sir for your presence over here now i would like to invite vaishnavi bag to propose a word of thanks yes it is my privilege to propose the word of thanks on this occasion i vaishnavi bag on behalf of mcts rajiv gandhi institute of technology and department of mechanical engineering and on behalf of the organizing committee of online one week short term training program on recent trends in renewable energy sources and applications and my own behalf extend a very hearty word of thanks to dr prakash ghare for accepting our invitation as resource person and sparing his valuable knowledge and time with us he has given good insights on the topic of solar power tower technology and use of ray tracing software soltrace thank you a lot sir today 9 july afternoon at 1:30 pm we have another session by mr milind dahigavkar on the topic of design considerations in electrical system of co generation plants i request all participants to join that session thank you all once again okay thank, thank you. you very much sir thank, thank you, you very much sir thank you very much sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Recording live. Yes, yes, sir. I request technical team to stop recording and stop live streaming.